If you understand deeply the laws of physics, then you know what is possible, what is plausible and impossible. And so having a good foundation in physics made all the difference in the world. All of biology can be explained in the language of chemistry. All of chemistry can be explained in the language of physics. But all of physics can be explained in the language of relativity, like the Big Bang, and the quantum theory, which gives us transistors and lasers and the internet. The goal is to merge these two great theories to create an equation, one inch long maybe, that would allow us to unravel the universe itself. That's the holy grail, the holy grail of science. We are all born scientists. When we're born, we want to know why the sun shines. We want to know where we come from. But then, then we hit the greatest destroyer of scientists known to science. The greatest destroyer of scientists is junior high school because in junior high school that's when scientists made boring memorization lists of names and facts and figures you're never going to use anyway that are totally irrelevant because you know science is based on principles concepts physical pictures that's what drives science like evolution like mm -hmm. relativity like Newton's yeah. laws and so that's why we lose so many people in the danger years, 15, 16, 17. Wow, Those are the point. danger years when we lose millions of young kids. I like to call Galileo, who once said that the purpose of science is to determine how the heavens go. But the purpose of religion is to determine how to go to heaven, how the heavens go, how the planets move, how the galaxy moves, how to be a good person, how to obey the laws and help your neighbors. But as long as we keep these two things relatively separate, they are complementary. So I don't see any contradiction between the two. What do you think happens when we die? I begin to realize that science is closing in on mortality. Genetic immortality is a possibility and also digital immortality is a possibility. Uh, for example, uh, everything known about us can be digitized our credit card transactions, our emails, to give an approximation of, well, who we are, our digital soul. Why do we die? We die because of the buildup of error. Error in our DNA, errors in our cells because of chaos, the second law of thermodynamics, things rust, things fall apart, things die. But if you add energy from the outside, you can get around the second law of thermodynamics. For example, with gene therapy, we'll be able to attack aging at three levels. One is telomerase. You see, telomerase also is used by cancer cells. Cancer cells are also immortal. That's why they kill you, because they are immortal. And that's one way that cancer cells become immortal. So we have to control telomerase. Second, we know that if you live, uh, want to live 30% longer, eat 30% less. Why is that? Well, we're not sure because you slow down the oxidation process. We don't want to eat 30% less. We want to eat lots of food and still live longer. And that gets us into oxidation. Why do cars get old? What ages in a car? Well, it's the engine. Why the engine? Because that's where you have combustion, oxidation, wear and tear. Well, where is the engine of a cell? The mitochondria, bingo. We now know where errors build up in a cell, the mitochondria. And with gene therapy, with CRISPR technology, one day, I think that our, maybe our grandkids, will hit the age of 30 and stop. They may like being 30 for many decades to come. I think that's well within the realm of possibility, wow. given the rapidity with which we are now unraveling the question, why do we have to die? Well, there is a benefit to dying. And that is on a societal level, you don't want to stagnate. Uh, you don't want ideas that are old, crusted and obsolete to dominate young people who may think differently. So on one hand, you want to, you want to transport the wisdom. You want to get the wisdom of a generation and give the next generation that wisdom of life. 
is life is more complicated than any simple formula. However, sometimes people begin to get, uh, you know, old and tired, and they want the young generation to be just as old and tired as they are, and that's not a good idea. That will cause stagnation. That's why I say that in the future, when people live forever or live very long, when they hit the age of 30, that's a good age to stop because you're still young enough to have vibrant ideas, but you still Got have it. the wisdom, the wisdom of the first 30 years of your life. Look at it this way. Why do we have to die? Look at the Greenland shark. The Greenland shark lives to be about 500 years of age. Um, we know that because just like tree rings, you can look at the eyeball of the fish, count the rings and calculate the age of these uh, fish. And they are between 400 to 500 years of age. So in other words, why do we have to die? In the Arctic where these uh, fish are, uh, metabolism is much slower and slower metabolism means air is built up slower and again that's what aging is the buildup of genetic and cellular mistakes they build up cells get sluggish they eventually die as a consequence but in worms for example we can actually double their lifespan and as i mentioned you can take any animal up to humans and make them live 30 percent longer now this has not been tested in humans by the way it's been tested in dogs, cats, primates. You eat 30% less, you live 30% longer. Why hasn't it been tested in humans? Humans bellyache too much. If they don't like something, they sue you. And who wants to be sued? So in other words, it'll be a while before we test humans by having them eat 30% less. Well, aging backwards would violate the second law of thermodynamics. The second law of thermodynamics says that in a closed system, things decay things get older things fall apart things die the key word is closed in a closed system things naturally get older in an open system like you have sunlight energy from the sun that can reverse the process that's how evolution takes place evolution should violate the second law of thermodynamics people get uh i mean if you take a look at human evolution we got smarter we got more adapted to the environment why? Because we had extra energy from the outside, sunlight. Now that open system could be biochemistry. And so biochemistry could replace sunlight and speed up this process. Instead of waiting millions of years for evolution to catch up, we may be able to do it in one generation. We hope you found this video valuable. Let us know what your opinion on all this is down in the comments section. And don't forget to like it, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel for more content just like this.